Genius Hour. Greetings. My name is Anne Christine Orino from Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Section 3A from the University of Perpetual Hapinian, Laguna Medical University. And welcome to my Genius R. So today, we will have a discussion about chest wall deformity, specifically about tectus carinatum. So first, before we continue with the discussion, let us talk about the basics or the overview of the thoracic cage to better understand and correlate the bones involved in chest deformity. The thoracic cage is a basket-like skeletal structure that forms the thorax or chest portion of the body. It provides protection to the organs such as the lungs and the heart, serving as an important means of bone protection for these vital organs. And it also facilitates lung inflation and chest expansion. The thoracic cage is mostly made up of flat, curved bones with a spongy interior called ribs. Most people are born with 12 pairs of ribs, all of which articulate with a vertebral column depending on their way of connecting to the sternum or known as the bone in the middle part of your chest. They may be classified as true ribs, false ribs, and floating ribs. Now, let's take a look at the... The coastal cartilages provide a flexible attachment for the heads and the distal ends of the ribs. It serves to prolong the ribs forward and contribute very materially in the elasticity of the walls of the thorax. Most ribs, such as your true and false ribs, attach to the sternum either directly or indirectly via these coastal cartilages. And now, the sternum. The sternum is a partially T-shaped elongated bone structure that anchors the anterior thoracic cage. The sternum is divided anatomically into three segments, the manubrium, body, and sipod process. The manubrium is the wider superior portion of the sternum, the elongated central portion is the body, and lastly, the inferior teeth of the sternum is called the sipod process. The sternum connects the ribs via the coastal cartilages forming the anterior rib cage. Before I proceed with the main topic, what comes in your mind when you hear chest wall deformity? Well, chest wall deformities, or what is known as the abnormal development and appearance of the chest, encompass a wide range of abnormalities that extend from the sternum to the vertebral column. It may be a group of congenital diseases that can appear as a single feature, maybe in a conjunction with other congenital anomalies, or as part of a genetic syndrome. A chest wall deformities morphological classification divides chest wall deformities into five types based on their anatomic topography. As you can see from the table, a variety of these classifications of chest wall anomalies are identified and described, which I will not go into further detail about. However, I want us to look at the two most common types of chest wall deformities classified as type 2, a coastal cartilage deformity known as pectus excavatum, and its sister condition pectus carinatum. First is pectus excavatum. Pectus excavatum, also known as funnel chest, is by far the most common chest wall deformity. It is characterized by depression in the chest wall as the sternum is pushed inward, usually in the lower half of the sternum. Children with this type of deformity appear to have sunken chests. While its sister condition, pectus carinatum, also known as pigeon chest, is the next most common chest deformity. And now, I will go into more detail about this certain type of disorder. We have learned about the anatomy and physiology of our chest, as well as what chest wall deformity is. Now heading back to the topic, I will now go into more detail about pectus carinatum. What exactly is it? and who is affected by this condition. Pectus carinatum, also known as pigeon chest, is a protrusion deformity of the anterior chest wall. It is a rare chest wall congenital deformation you see in which there is an outward unusual growth of the cartilages and are bones of the chest wall such as your sternum and ribs. As you can see in the image, you can clearly see the distinction between a normal chest wall and what is not. A normal chest wall has no visible deformities, whereas an abnormal chest wall, such as pectus carinatum, shows an outward protrusion of the chest. In some children, one or both sides of the chest protrude. Pectus carinatum is called a pigeon chest because this condition causes the sternum to protrude and the narrow depression is created along the side of the chest, giving the chest a bow out or bulging appearance similar to a bird 
specifically a pigeon. Although it is a congenital disorder, it frequently goes unnoticed at birth. It typically becomes more pronounced during early adolescence when growth is accelerated, meaning it gets severe as a child grows because the bones of the cartilage grow as well. It can be perceived at the earliest ages of 10 to 11 and peaks at 16 to 18 years of age. Let's look into the epidemiology of this disorder. Pectus carinatum is estimated to occur in up to 0.06% of live births with an incidence of approximately 1 per 1,000 seen in teenagers. Males are more frequently affected at a ratio of nearly 4 is to 1. Approximately 15% of children with pectus carinatum develop scoliosis and it is also considered as the second most common chest abnormality seen in children. There are two different types of pectus carinatum known as the chondroglandular and chondromanubrial. Type 1 is the chondrogladular, also known as chicken breast. It is the most common type of deformity of pectus carinatum, wherein as shown in the image, the middle and the lower portions of the sternum protrude and arc forward. Here, the coastal cartilages are concave and usually symmetrically depressed, accentuating the sternal prominence. The deformity is asymmetric in 30 to 50% of cases, and infrequently, Patients can have a combined pectus carinatum on one side of the chest and pectus excavatum on the other, making the chest look sunken. Next is type 2, which is chondromanubrial, also known as powder pigeon press. It is when the deformity is in the manubrium. This type is a more complex and substantially less common form of pectus carinatum deformity. In this form, as you can see in the image, the upper portion of the sternum, which is your manubrium, protrudes anteriorly and the body of the sternum deviates posteriorly, giving your sternum the characteristic of a Z-shape on a lateral view with the top section pushing forward. Next, what are the symptoms of pectus carinatum? Pectus carinatum is often asymptomatic, meaning it doesn't have any noticeable symptoms. It does not usually affect the internal organs or cause any problems in the way the body functions. But when symptoms do occur, People may report symptoms such as shortness of breath upon exertion or exercise, fatigue by feeling tired and weak, which may limit one's activity as they get tired sooner than others, chest pain, tenderness or pain in the areas of abnormal cartilage growth, frequent respiratory affections such as colds, tachycardia with a heart rate more than 100 beats per minute, and reduced stamina. Because as respiration becomes inefficient, it does have a negative impact on the gas exchange in the lungs, resulting in a decrease in stamina. Now, what causes pectus carinatum? Well, the definite answer is unknown, but it is typically a result of the cartilage part of the ribs that grows more rapidly than the bones around it, causing the ribs and the sternum to protrude outward. Some studies have also said that it can also be caused by vitamin D deficiency in children with rickets due to the deposition of unmineralized osteoid. Although it is the least common, it can also happen following an open heart surgery or in children with poorly controlled bronchial asthma. Next are risk factors. This disorder doesn't have a concrete and our exact origin of the abnormal growth and condition, though it is often seen across cases that one of the risk factors are genes because the disorder can be passed genetically as well. Pectus carinatum may occur alone, but it frequently occurs along those who have specific or existing genetic conditions. This condition may be associated with Down syndrome, Edward syndrome, Marfan syndrome affecting the body's connective tissue, homocystinuria, Marcus syndrome, osteogenesis imperfecta, some studies have shown that pectus carinatum have an association with asthma or chronic bronchitis, scoliosis, or kyphosis. Also, some have mitral valve prolapse, a condition in which the heart mitral valve functions abnormally. Pectus carinatum may be associated with congenital heart disease. In these patients and in those with suspected or identified cardiac pathology, preoperative cardiology evaluation is recommended. As I've mentioned earlier, pectus deformities usually become more severe during adolescent growth years and may worsen throughout adult life. Diagnostic tests are used to diagnose diseases and may even be used to determine the severity of the disorder. 
Some of the diagnostic tests don't include chest x-ray. To diagnose pectus carinatum, a chest x-ray is done to examine how the chest wall is growing. Also, people with pectus carinatum usually develop a normal heart, but the deformity may prevent this from functioning optimally. Those who experience symptoms related to the heart may need an electrocardiogram or echocardiogram test. Computer tomography or magnetic resonance imaging scans may also be done. In more serious cases, these scans are used to determine the severity of the condition. If surgery is being considered as a form of treatment, these imaging tests can aid in the planning of the procedure. If the condition of pectus carinatum is causing severe respiratory symptoms, a pulmonary function test, also known as PFT, may be required to determine how much a person's lung function has been compromised. And lastly, depending on the appearance of the pectus carinatum, genetic testing may be required to look for related genetic syndromes such as scoliosis, congenital heart disease, Marfan syndrome, and other genetic diseases. Early detection enables more non-invasive treatment options. If a child has not yet reached puberty, the treatment for this may be postponed until they reach a certain age. The standard treatment approach for pectus carinatum in children with a mild to moderate form of the condition is orthotic bracing. Chest orthosis or orthotic bracing is one of the most common techniques in dealing with pectus carinatum. It is a non-surgical system of bracing to correct the deformity of the chest by gradually decreasing the degree of bony protrusion of the chest wall. A specially fitted compression brace, as seen in the image, fits around the circumference of the chest applying gentle pressure to reshape the chest over time. It may need to be adjusted on a regular basis as the child grows. There are two main stages of wearing the orthosis. One is the corrective phase and the other one is the maintenance phase. In the corrective phase, the orthosis is worn 23 hours a day in the first three to six months. While in the maintenance phase, it typically lasts three to six months when the overgrowth in the chest is flattened sufficiently the orthosis will be worn for 8 to 10 hours per night. If the protrusion recurs during this phase, the corrective phase must be repeated. As you can see in the image, you can see how the chest looks like in people with pectus carinatum, with and without chest orthosis. In much the same way that braces work in orthodontics, in which braces are used to correct the alignment of teeth, chest orthosis will allow the protruded areas of the chest to return to their normal position. Another form of treatment for pectus carinatum is called Ravitch procedure. Ravitch procedure is an invasive surgical procedure option for severe cases of pectus carinatum or for cases that have failed chest orthosis or chest bracing. This procedure is done through a horizontal chest incision across the mid chest. In this repair, the abnormal coastal cartilages are removed, preserving the lining that covers the outside of the cartilage allowing the sternum to be pushed down more in a more normal position. In some cases, an astrotomy or a break in the sternum is done to allow the sternum to be positioned downward. In addition, to keep the sternum in the desired position after the removal of the cartilages and the ostrotomy, a temporary bar or a stainless steel struts may be placed across the anterior chest to support the sternum, allowing it to be elevated for months. Where the ravish procedure is safe and effective, complications can still occur, including pneumothorax, bleeding, pleural effusion, pericarditis, infection, bar displacement, and recurrence of the pectus carinatum condition. Looking into the physiological consequences of the disease, patients with pectus carinatum may benefit from exercise therapy performed by a physiotherapist to correct posture and strengthen the chest and back muscles. Exercises necessary to target the deformity itself includes manipulation or mobilization, chest wall strengthening exercises, and posture and segmental breathing techniques. Apart from the possible physiologic consequences, pectus deformities can also have a significant psychological impact. Though even in mild cases, the psychological impact can be a lot worse throughout adolescence and later in adulthood, which can cause negative self-image, disrupt social relationships, low self-confidence, as well as anxiety and depression. Individuals with pectus carinatum who have a significant concerns about their body image or low self-esteem 
can benefit from psychological counseling, whereas for some, after adolescence, they use bodybuilding as means to hide their deformities. Now, what are the things to be considered at home when one is carrying a chest orthosis or brace within them? The patient or the guardian can be instructed to check the skin on the protruding part of the chest every day when the orthosis is removed to ensure there is no rubbing or skin breakdown. They must be informed that mild redness over the protruding chest is normal and to be expected, but no sores or rashes should be present. Wearing a singlet or t-shirt beneath the brace can be advised to prevent the skin from rubbing and becoming damaged or sore. As the orthosis causes the chest to sweat more, it is important that they must be able to wash and dry the skin beneath the front and back parts on a daily basis. They should also be informed that it is normal to feel slight pressure while wearing the orthosis. However, if a person experiences any pain or discomfort, they must be informed to seek medical attention as possible. For patients who have undergone ravage surgery, they must be instructed on some post-operative activities at home, such as to deep breathing exercises, to limit twisting movements of the chest and rapid elevation of the arms overhead for at least four months post-operatively. Be warned that gym classes are not indicated for five months after surgery in school age children, and to encourage stretching exercises that involve pulling the shoulder blades posteriorly to improve posture. The awareness has increased for this disorder and has produced non-invasive procedures to assist patients with pectus carinatum's way of life and options are also open to deal with the disorder properly pertaining to the surgical approach. As for the outlook or prognosis, pectus carinatum is non-life-threatening and has an excellent prognosis. If the case is mild to moderate, there is a possibility that no medical treatment will be required. Patients may have no symptoms and no long-term negative health effects even if they do not receive treatment. The vast majority of children who are diagnosed can lead normal lives. When it comes to children who require medical intervention, the results are usually visible within a short period of time. Treatment is usually for cosmetic reasons, and both external bracing and minimally invasive surgical techniques have shown promise in improving the appearance of the chest wall. Those who choose treatment for pectus carinatum report high levels of satisfaction. And that is the end of our discussion towards pectus carinatum, and this has been my genius R. Again, this is Anne Christine Orino from BSN 3A. These are my references. Again, thank you again for listening and have a nice day.